Welcome. Uh, this is a short lived video lecture on study skills for a college seminar. So, welcome. Uh, so, last week we talked about um, kind of the science of learning a little bit. You know, there's new research in cognitive science, and we talked about having a growth mindset versus having a fixed mindset. And so, it's pretty interesting um, what we've learned about learning. And so, kind of the main idea from last week was um, we know today that. People aren't born with certain skills um, that they keep no matter what they do. Certain people are uh, not uh, incapable of developing certain skills. Basically, long story short, we learn things by doing things. Um, and everybody's capable of learning new things. And nobody has such great skills uh, that, that they will learn new things without giving any effort. So, you know, the big picture is in order to learn things, you've got to put in an effort. And that's why uh, nowadays there's such an emphasis on active learning. I'm making sure that you're actually doing things to learn things because that's how the brain works. You know, we know that um, what, what learning means is that inside your brain, you're creating new neural pathways. And we know that it takes a lot of repetition, a lot of practice to develop those neural pathways. But um, the good news is everybody's capable of doing it uh, with enough hard work. And so this lecture is kind of going to be about um, what are the practices of uh, good study skills so that you can put in the work uh, to learn what you need to learn uh, to do well and, and move upwards and onwards uh, with your academic and professional careers. So some of the principles of um, effective learning in terms of, you know, how, how do we build these neural pathways in our brain by putting in the work. And so the first one is prior learning. And so we know that, um, you know, the more someone already knows about a subject, uh, the easier it is for them to learn new things about it. And so this is why you might ask, why does my professor have me read the textbook before the lecture when the lecture is on the same thing as the textbook? Prior learning is the answer to that question. Um, it gives you a little bit of background information. And so the professor is going to explain things in uh, uh, more detail, maybe a little bit more simply. Um, and uh, that's one part. Another part is um, it gives you another repetition. We've got to put in a lot of repetitions, a lot of work to learn things. And so you read the textbook, you put in one repetition, you've got the prior learning, you come to class, you do the lecture, you have another repetition. If you did the reading from the textbook, the lecture is going to be much more valuable to you because you have the prior learning. So prior learning, uh, what did you already know uh, before you kind of... Uh, stepped into the new learning experience quality of processing so basically how well do you study and this is uh, one things we'll talk about in this lecture here are, are uh, uh, the good ways to study uh, basically and and two things this can depend on the material you're studying the material you're studying um, for example if you're if you're uh, taking a math test right you need to practice problems memorizing uh, passages from your math textbook is not going to help you pass the math test. Practicing math problems is going to help you pass the math test. Um, on the other hand, in anatomy and physiology, um, you know, that's, that's one case where you're going to need to memorize things. So you're going to have to come up with strategies to memorize things. Um, so that's one part. Another part is your learning style. And so there are a lot of different ways to review material and to get repetition of material. And different people have different learning styles. Uh, you might be a kinesthetic learner. Um, and, and so it might be better for you to maybe make some kind of audio recording of your anatomy and physiology uh, concepts um, and take a walk and listen to them. Uh, other people, it might be easier to create a study guide on a piece of paper and then to, to go through repetitions or create flashcards whatever it might be. So your learning style and uh, the, the nature of the course you're studying uh, determine kind of what you do to get the, the quality study time in. And then quantity of processing, pretty simple. How much do you study? You all know that, right? Um, but a couple things to uh, distributed practice and sufficient time on tasks. So distributed practice, we know from the research that you're better off uh, breaking up your study sessions over a longer period of time because it kind of gives your brain a chance to kind of uh, soak up that information. And so you could study for, you know, eight hours uh, for the same test. And research shows that if you break that eight hours up into, say, eight different days, um, you're going to do better than you would have done if you 
say, you did that eight hours the night before the test. And when we talk about test taking skills, one of the major points I'll make is that uh, pulling all nighters is a really horrible idea. But I'll save that lecture for later. And sufficient time on tasks, so how much time do you spend? So it's good to break up your studying into uh, smaller um, uh, sessions that are broken up over a longer period of time. However, each time you do study, it's important that you, you spend a, a, a sufficient time uh, studying. And so something like uh, at least a half hour at a time um, if you can. Um, so these are these are the principles of effective learning. And so how to apply them? And that's that's what we'll talk about now. In, in practical terms, how do you apply them? And so I forgive me if this um, seems self-evident, but I think it's worth I think it's worth going through this to be crystal clear on on kind of what it means to uh, practice good study habits, kind of from the first day of the semester to the last day of the semester. Um, with all your exams kind of in between. And so the core learning system is a way to think about this. And so the C stands for collect. And so this is the first part. Uh, this is what you do during your readings, what you do during lectures. Um, you're collecting the information that you're going to need to know later. And so this is why it's so important to go to class, why it's so important to do all the readings. Um, you know, if you're not collecting the information, then you don't have it and you can't study it. Uh, organizing the information. So this is a really crucial thing, and this is one thing that might not be entirely self-evident. Um, once you collect all that material, it's extremely important that before you study for a test, for example, you need to identify which information is critical, what do you really need to know, and you need to organize that material into some kind of study uh, materials that are going to kind of streamline um, the process of studying and make it more efficient. It's not efficient to reread a whole chapter from a textbook the night before a test. It's not efficient to reread all your notes the night before a test. It is efficient to create a study guide to identify the key concepts, put it all in one place so that you can efficiently uh, study the things that you know you need to know. Uh, rehearse, and this is when you're studying the things you need uh, to know. And you're giving yourself repetitions, flashcards, study guides, audio, um, whatever it might be. Um, you know, giving yourself repetitions with that information or studying, you know, practicing math problems, um, um, all this kind of thing. And then finally, evaluating, uh, you know, it's, it's when you take stock of what you know and what you don't know, what you still need to know. This is why you get quizzes um, before a test so that, you know, it's, it's there to tell you, uh, what you need to know still, right? Um, and when you are studying, you should find ways to test yourself, even, you know, if you're um, studying anatomy and physiology, you know, you want to have flashcards, have the answer on one side, the, uh, the term on the other side, and, and you test yourself. It's not that hard to do. Um, so you figure out what you know, what you don't know, and you focus on uh, uh, giving yourself more practice with the things that you don't know so that you'll know them when you need to know them. Okay, and so we'll go through uh, these briefly, the, the core method, um, collecting. Uh, the first thing is reading. And so there's a misconception among students uh, today that textbook readings are optional. Um, if, if, if your professor has them on the syllabus, it means they're mandatory, unless they explicitly tell you they're optional. And again, uh, reading, very important because it gives you that first repetition. Um, it also is going to provide you with textbook definitions. The textbooks are designed to highlight the important information. They give you what we'll call uh, visual cues as to what, what the crucial terms are. Um, and so with reading, you've got mindless reading and you've got active reading. Mindless reading is when you skim things without thinking about it, just to kind of be able to say you did it. Uh, that's kind of a waste of time. Active reading means you're participating in what you're reading and you're trying to identify what the key concepts are. Uh, you're annotating, highlighting, um, and maybe asking questions uh, and responding. You might make a note if something is unclear, so you can ask your professor during lecture, this kind of thing. So you're participating in the reading process. Uh, reading is an active process. It's not a passive process. And so I always, when I was a student, I always thought, you know, even for, I'm an English person, but um, it was like, it's like a game, you know. I'm trying to figure out which information uh, is really important. Um, I do the reading before the lecture, and then I go to the lecture, I think I know what's important, and then my professor is going to tell me 
uh, what they think is important. And I should probably pay attention to what they think is important because they're the ones who write the test. Uh, but it's kind of like a game. Can I get out ahead of uh, my professor? Can I guess uh, what is really important here? Um, then you go to lecture and they, they, should, they should hopefully tell you uh, what, is, what is really critical. And so with reading, annotating, a million ways to do it. Um, you can use the highlighter, you can underline, you, whatever you want to do. Um, important thing about annotating, though, is that, um, you know, there's such a thing as too much. You want to identify the really crucial concepts. You don't want to highlight half your textbook. Because, again, that's not efficient. It's not going to help you later. Uh, what's going to help you later is if you've identified uh, these main concepts. And one way to do that is a, in a, a reverse outline, where maybe on a separate sheet of paper, you'll kind of write down, you'll, you'll make an outline of, of the chapter or the reading um, to identify those main ideas as best you can. And so uh, that's, that's reading. And then for lectures, uh, you're taking notes, obviously, and kind of the same deal, except you know, you're, you're, you're listening to a professor who uh, probably has some kind of uh, PowerPoint up there, right? Um, kind of same thing. But instead of uh, visual cues that you get in a uh, textbook, during lecture, you might get verbal cues. You know, people say, might say things like, uh, you really might want to write this down because it's going to be on the test or, you know, um, there could be visual cues as well. If, if your professor took the time to put something into a PowerPoint, it's probably because it's important, right? And so listen for the verbal cues, looking for the visual cues. Uh, and then when you're writing things down, one misconception students have is, you know, you should write every single word. I mean, you know, you need to be a professional um, dictationist, if that's the right term, but uh, uh, to do that. Nobody can really do that except for people who are trained to do it in the courts and so on. Uh, you want to, again, you want to identify the key ideas as best you can um, to put them into some kind of outline format. Um, and, and a lot of professors will make the PowerPoint slides available to you. And so that can be a helpful way to go about it, right? Uh, you get the PowerPoint slides and you take extra notes maybe right on top of them. Um, so yeah, with the, with the taking notes, again, it's a matter of trying to identify the key ideas. And really, um, identifying key ideas, it's, it's a skill um, that you learn with practice. And all your courses are going to give you practice at this skill. And what you'll see is over time, you're going to get better at that skill. So at first, you try your best. But if you, if you read the textbook, you go to lecture, um, this is a process that's going to teach you that skill of, of identifying uh, the, the key ideas. OK, so you've collected all your materials. You read your book diligently, and you went to class, and you took notes. Uh, so what happens next? Well, now you've got this whole gigantic uh, pile of information. And you might say, what do I do with this? Do I just read it all over again before the test, or, or what have you? Um, the best thing to do is to organize all those materials um, into some kind of study guide. And so again, different people have different learning styles, different people might find different types of study guide uh, helpful. For different courses, you might have different uh, types of study guides. Um, but you need to take all that material and uh, you need to decide what you, what you really need to know. Um, and you need to kind of condense it down into a manageable amount of information. Um, and so this is where, you know, studying begins. It's actually an active process, active learning, um, where you're sitting down with all your materials and you're kind of transferring that information from this giant pile of materials you've collected down into a more condensed, uh, streamlined study guide where you can really focus on what you need to know in an efficient way. And so the great thing about this is not only are you uh, making your studying more efficient, but what I always found, and I've, I know some of you have already mentioned this in our discussions on, on Moodle, um, that the, actually the process of, of just copying the material is a great way to practice active learning. You know, I'm, I'm, I found this definition of this term. I'm going to copy it into my study guide. So by copying it out, I'm, I'm engaged. I can't, like, fall asleep. Um, and, and that's really a good study habit. So I remember uh, being a student and, um, you know, uh, I would create ma many study guides, right? And because I found that actually creating the study guide itself was one of the most effective uh, things uh, to give me practice. Um, and so you've got to take that step where you've got to take the gigantic block of material that you've collected, and you've got to uh, condense it down into a easier to manage 
uh, study materials. And so some tips here, uh, you're essentially trying to guess what's on the test, right? And hopefully your professor will give you a hand in, in doing that, uh, if, if with nothing else, by what they cover in lecture, right? Um, creating outlines, graphic organizer, which are basically uh, uh, visual uh, outlines, flashcards, are a lot of people like uh, certain types of uh, tests, you're really going to want to have practice questions like math tests and this kind of thing. Uh, audio recordings, you can identify the cru crucial passages and, and this kind of thing. So extremely important that you take that step, and that might not be entirely obvious to everyone. You've got to take everything you've collected, turn it into uh, study materials that will help you be more efficient. And, and by doing so, you're practicing active learning. And then, you know, you continue your uh, active learning by rehearsing. And so, you know, the classic example of rehearsing, you got your anatomy and physiology uh, exam coming up, you make flashcards, um, and then you've got the, uh, the term on the one side, the answer on the other side, maybe a picture there to help you out. Um, and, and you test yourself and you go through it and you rehearse. Rehearse means practicing. And so you're practicing to see if you've retained that information. Um, and then you're also, you know, in that process, evaluating what you know, what you don't know. Okay, which ones uh, do I need to, to put more work in with? Uh, which ones do I already know? You know, and so uh, practice is what rehearsing means. And so there's, you know, there's rote memorization, which in some courses, like I think anatomy and physiology fits the, the bill. You've got to, you've got to actually memorize uh, things. Um, and, more, and most, in many courses, I don't want to say most, but in many courses, you don't need to actually uh, memorize word for word anything. Uh, you need to know, it's more about major concepts, major ideas, like think uh, maybe uh, psychology, sociology, uh, this kind of thing. So again, you've got to really think about what kind of course it is and what kind of studying you really need to do. And obviously with uh, math and other sciences, it's really uh, critical that you uh, have practice questions that you can test yourself with. And I remember doing this, you know, you find the, the homework questions that you have the answer for, you forgot the answer and you do the, you do the problem and you see if you got the correct answer. And if you didn't, you try to figure out why you didn't. Okay, so best practices for rehearsing. And so again, we're going back to that distributed study schedule. You want to give yourself um, shorter sessions over a long period of time uh, rather than trying to cram the night before. We know from research cramming the night before is not effective. Um, you know, uh, the research shows this, uh, but you still want to spend sufficient time on tasks, meaning every time you study, you know, you want to try your best to make it to at least a half hour, you know, um, other other things so study groups you know uh, learning is a very social thing for most people so you know if you have some friends if you guys have time to get together that's a great that's a great way to stay motivated and and uh, to get more practice in again condensing all the materials down into what's really important um, reciting things out loud trying to visual visualize things in your head again rewriting things uh, I always found writing study plans uh, study guides um was really effective for me testing yourself so on and so forth baking memory cards so i know some people you know uh you've got the uh the post-its the stickets and, and you put the terms on there and you leave them around the house so that you can you know see it uh see it everywhere you go in your house and so with memorization one a couple good strategies if you have to memorize things and, and probably again uh, if you're a nursing student or a radiology student, there are going to be courses where you're going to need to memorize. One, one good strategy is using acronyms. So, for example, for the Great Lakes, HOMES is a great acronym. And so it'll, it'll help you, the, the first letter of each lake, you know, Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, Superior. Um, and so, you know, just remembering HOMES will give you that kind of uh, uh, little uh, acronym uh, to jog your memory which was, you know, incredibly helpful, incredibly helpful. It's almost impossible to memorize complex things without one of these kind of strategies. And then uh, acrostics is when you make a nice, a silly little, uh, you know, phrase. And so we probably have heard of this one. Uh, Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. 
And so I still remember this and I still still use it actually. Um, the, the, the order of operations, first you do the parentheses, then you do the exponents, then you do the multiplication, then you do the division, then you do the addition, then you do the subtra subtraction. I can remember math tests uh, from days of yore where I would have been dead in the water without, uh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So those are a couple of um, memorization strategies uh, that might work for you to, to uh, make it a little bit easier on your brain to remember all that stuff. Okay, and evaluate. And so uh, figuring out what you know, what you don't know. Um, like we said, when you're testing yourself with the flashcards or with the study guide or, or with practice problems, uh, you're evaluating then. When you get a quiz, you know, um, the whole point is to let you know uh, what you know and what you don't know and kind of let you know what you ought to study more when we get to the exam. If you have a cumulative final exam, um, you know, you might want to go back to that midterm, right? You might want to see, okay, what was on the midterm? It's probably going to be on the final two. Uh, what did I do well on? What did I not do well on? Uh, which, which, which concepts uh, from the midterm uh, do I need to focus on um, a little bit more to make sure that uh, I really get those down? And so all the, all the assessments um, that you're given throughout the semester, they're there for a reason. They're there to help you understand what you know and what you don't know um, so that you're better prepared uh, for the big exams. And so, you know, for some students... Uh, Never uh, kind of get the get the memo that like if you're if you're uh, studying for an exam a big exam one of the best things to do is just go back and, and look at all the quizzes and what did they test you on on the quizzes uh, what did they if it's a cumulative final what did you get tested on on the midterm because essentially through those assessments they're telling you what they're going to test you for on on the final right and so you already know what they're going to ask um, and if you know what they're going to ask. Uh, that's like one gigantic step ahead for you in, in doing well in your course. Okay, and so that's uh, that's about what I had to say. Um, I've got a few slides here. I'll, I'll, I'll bring them up. Here are some reading tips. Um, you know, I'm not going to go through these all. I'll put them up here. You can pause the video and take a look at these. Taking notes, best practices. Again, I'm not going to read them all to you, but if you want to pause the video and take a look at these, they might be helpful. And that's it. So I hope that was helpful. Um, my key, my key point in this lecture is that um, it's everything uh, in, in the courses are there for a reason. Um, it's all there to give you as much practice as you can get. It's all there to help you evaluate what you know and what you don't know as much as you can. So, you know, uh, follow the courses the way your professor has them designed. Design them that way for a reason. They want you to succeed. And if you go through the courses the way your professor has designed them, um, your likelihood of succeeding kind of goes up, up, up a lot. Um, because all these... Um, Ideas about uh, learning and good study habits are built in uh, to the courses, right? And so, you know, it can be for you, it can be as simple as uh, simply following, uh, you know, the course as it's, as it's uh, drawn up. And finally, you know, uh, creating study guides before you study for a big exam. Uh, that's, a, that's a really critical thing for all the reasons why I mentioned. Okay, uh, that's it. I'm going to cut it there. Um, Good luck.